Welcome back to Prompt Circle, where we discuss everything AI. In today's video, we're going to be looking at building GPTs with actions. So today we're going to be looking at how to use uh, the actions feature in a GPT uh, to trigger an external action. So previously we've looked at retrieval, we've looked at the use of code interpreter. Um, the other thing that is also built in obviously is the DALI uh, 3 uh, image generation as well. Um, so these are some of the things that are currently available through a GPT. So maybe you want to build a GPT that interacts with other services within your organization. I'm using Slack as an example because it's a pretty easy example to use. So essentially the way this GPT is going to work is that I'll be able to send messages to specific channels directly by giving it a command here. So I could do something like um, send a happy thanks given message to the general channel add some cool festive emojis so now what's going to happen here is that you're going to see um you know the action getting started and basically what an action is is an api call out and i'll show you how to configure this so it says some info will be sent to slack.com only do this for the sites you trust i say allow because i wanted to be able to send the message and then it's just going to go ahead and send this message the happy thanksgiving message has been sent successfully to the general channel complete with festive emojis so if i go into my general channel you can see here happy thanksgiving wishing everyone a joyful day filled with warm gratitude so this was basically um, triggered purely from my slack bot so essentially i used the information um I, I i instructed it to send out that message and it's able to call the slack api the post message api to send a message i can do the same thing with say sending a message to myself so i could say um send ugo a message informing forming him about the launch happening on the fourth floor for our thanks given dinner so again you send out the message now it's also going to identify who to send the message to so in this case you notice i sent this to the general channel it's also able to send directly to Ugo, uh, which I'll show you very, very shortly. So again, once again, sends a message to Ugo telling them about stuff. And when we go into our channel, we can see uh, that a message has been sent, uh, sent. Hey, Ugo, just a quick reminder about our Thanksgiving dinner happening today. It's on the fourth floor. Looking forward to seeing you there. Now, if you can think about it, this is wild. Uh, we're basically connecting to GPT and making it have access to our API. So I'll show you very, very quickly how to build something like this. It's pretty easy to build. Uh, so let's go ahead and edit this GPT so you can see exactly what's happening behind the scenes. So let's start with the prompt itself. So the prompt simply says, as a Slack scheduler bot, the assistant will specialize in sending and scheduling messages on Slack. It will adopt a professional and efficient tone reflecting the utility and practicality of slack as a communication tool in a business environment the assistant will, will guide users through the process of composing and sending and scheduling messages offering clear instructions and confirming details to ensure accuracy for scheduling messages it will ask for specific date time and content of the message along with the target channel or user to also provide tips and best practices for effective communication with slack so basically this prompt was generated for me uh, when i was building the gpt itself so you know when you're using the gpt builder when you kind of put in the the, the characteristics of how you want your bots to behave uh, it's going to generate something like this in terms of a prompt but there are additional things that i have added um, to this as well to give it some context so because i'm going to be sending messages to ugo to general to yannick um, i have added what each channel is and what the channel id associated with each user is 
specifically to enable the bots to fit, fill in these information whenever we send a message to Ugo or when we send a message to General or when we send a message to any other person. So we're giving it the context and that is why when I said send to Ugo, it knew that it should send to me. And when I said send to General, it knew it should send to the General Channel ID. So that's the first step, but this alone is not going to make it work. The next thing you want to do is to go into actions. So here I have created an action and this action is called uh, slack.com. Now the key thing when you're working with um, actions is that you have to provide an open API specification. So an open API specification basically is a standard, is a common standard uh, that indicates exactly how um, your API should be utilized. So there are so many um, resources on this. Uh, there is a particular GitHub um, uh, uh, GitHub repository which has access to various um, open API schemas for different applications, especially for the popular applications. So whether you're doing this for Slack, you're doing it for Salesforce, HubSpot, you're doing it for Jira, whatever it is, all these APIs have this open API specification which just simply explains what how the API works. So let's take a, a very quick example here. So chat.postmessage is the endpoint that is responsible for sending messages to a specific channel in Slack. So we provide that endpoint, we provide a summary of this particular endpoint, and we say this summary, this um, application is intended to send a message. Now, we also have to add, what is the request body? Like what should be part of this request where we're making the request? Okay, so there are a few things. There's a channel, you know, which basically is a channel ID. It's a string. There is, um, you know, the text, which is basically the message itself that you're sending out. There's blocks. If you're using, if you're familiar with Slack, and if you look through my Slack videos, you probably hear about this a little bit. If you're familiar with Slack, there's a concept called blocks, and blocks allow you to send more rich text type messaging. Um, so let's say you want, we wanted to send an image as an example. Um, we could send, we could tell it to send an image. It wouldn't be able to send the image as text. It would need to send it um, as. Uh, an image, uh, you know, maybe fitting in the URL and using the right type of block inside Slack to do that. And then we also have, you know, what the expected responses are, right? What of which of the attributes are required and what the responses are. So when a message is sent successfully, you're expected to receive a 200 and what should that object look like? So explaining exactly what the success object looks like and also defining what the failed status would look like as well. So if for instance, you have a failed message or something like that, then what should that look like as well? And then finally, um, the second um, endpoint we've added here is for scheduling messages. And once again, we've defined the attributes that are necessary for scheduling messages. And then we also add, you know, sort of the, the response expected and stuff like that. Now you can add as many endpoints as you choose. So for instance, let's say you're building a Slack management uh, tool or Slack management GPT, which, you know, can create channels, can delete channels, can add people to channels. Let's say you want to build an assistant that helps you manage your entire Slack operation, because that can be quite challenging. You can build a tool that understands exactly how to do different things inside Slack and then use that information uh, to manage your Slack um, operation. So that could be a really easy and simple thing that you can build. You add a bunch of new endpoints like create channel, delete channel, um, add people to channel, post messages to channel like we have already, pin messages to channel. Like you can add as many actions as you want uh, as long as you have the open API specification. I think that generating open API specification is not that difficult as well. So basically one of the easiest ways of doing it is pasting the entire um, API documentation of Slack inside GPT and saying something like generate an open API specification. It will do the same thing for you. I think that's how I actually generated this. Now, once you enter a valid schema inside your 
actions, you would now see the two main actions that I captured here. And these are the send message and schedule message. So this is, these are the two things that our app can do. And of course you can test them to see if they're working. So just by hitting this test, um, you can see if it's working, but before you actually get it, get this to work, we all know that, um, yes, Slack is, uh, going to work, but you need authentication and for authentication, they've added an authentication here. So whether that is your bot token, in the case of Slack or something like that, so you can get your bot token from your Slack application. So I have a lot of videos where I've talked about Slack applications, so you can always go, go back and look at them. But if you go into your Slack application and go into the OAuth and permission section, you, all you really need to do is just copy this bot user OAuth token and you need to just simply paste it in your authentication. So under API key, Vera, just paste in your um, API key. Now, if you're using other uh, types of authentic authentication, uh, like the basic or OAuth, or you have a custom authentication for your application, you can also add this. Now, one of the limitations I noticed because I know someone mentioned that they would love for me to build um, a notion application. And I was thinking about building that before I actually use this example. The challenge with that is that there is this version, um, in the headers of every notion document, uh, um, API call. And I couldn't really figure out how to kind of infuse it inside my API schema. For some reason, it wasn't really accepting the ability to inject any header that wasn't authorization into the call. So that might be something that OpenAI is still trying to figure out um, and add more flexibility around how you define your headers, because right now it's only accepting, um, you know, the, the, the authentication header types that they have declared here. So that could be something interesting to, to look out for, but this is really exciting for me. I think this opens up a ton of opportunities because when you kind of think about it, you could do quite a lot, uh, by simply hooking up the actions. So like I said, this could be Slack, this could be any other uh, application where you have APIs. So when I think about CRM, for instance, for salespeople or folks who are customer success agents and things like that, maybe you want to sort of pull information from your Salesforce. So as a developer, all you need to do is go and get, grab the open API specification for Salesforce, drop it in here, create all the actions, and then they can interact with these actions directly from inside um, the system. Now, one other thing that is interesting about this, uh, if I go back to uh, that particular bot, is that because I have also attached some uh, I act, attached a document like, so it's, it's, this is, this is really cool. I attached a document, uh, so a knowledge document to this bot. It also means that I can, you know, tell it to go retrieve information from that document and send it out as a Slack message. So for instance, I have this, uh, as expense reimbursement policy document that I have here, I can very, very simply say something like send. to the general channel information information about personal vehicle use right so this is an item that actually um, is inside my uh, document my expense area reimbursement document and when i send this information what's going to happen is that first it's going to go and read the document that I had provided, uh, capture the information from there, and then it's going to simply send that message directly into Slack. So when I go into Slack and look at that message, um, inside the general channel, you see, it says, hello team, just a quick reminder to submit your expense reimbursement form by the end of the week. Please ensure all forms are filled out, including original itemized receipts. Reminder, when using personal vehicles for agency business, employees must ensure to use a minimum of 1 million liability. So this is information coming directly from that document. So you can start to see how you're pairing the knowledge that is associated with your GPT actions and potentially as well, 
being able to do your code interpreter. So as we kind of go through these series of videos I'm making around showing you how you can build GPTs for everyday use and how you can start to pair them with your own internal services, we'll see more of these types of examples. I hope this was helpful for you. I hope you learned something. Looking forward to seeing what type of GPTs you build. Have a great one. Bye.